Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a champion guide for the 180-day login reward legendary Sill of Drakes. A lot of the community is going to be acquiring her here in about five or six days because of where all of the endgame players kind of started at the same spot. So you can see here on this account, in about six days, we're going to be acquiring Sill of Drakes. So I wanted to go ahead and get some information out there to the community, do some testing, and dive into her and kind of show you her in action and kind of have a discussion about Sill of Drakes. So let's get into it. Alrighty, let's go ahead and fire up the index. We're going to go to Barbarians and the Defense Magic Affinity Legendary up here in the top left is Sill of Drakes. Now, uh, the first thing we always take note of is the 95 base speed, which is, um, it's okay. I would like to see it usually 97 or above for a Legendary, but she is a free daily login reward. So, uh, 95 is not bad by any means. There's notable Legendaries like Martyr that have 93. So, we can definitely work with 95 base speed. And as always, for my champion guides, I will have one of these infographics down in the video description that you can kind of pull up and take a look at the raids and these stat priorities and the masteries that are currently being used on the champion that you will see in this video so that will be down there if you want to pull that up and take a look so let's put that away and dive into the kit here all right so this is going to be a defense based champion which is why you see the pretty significant base defense of 1387 but also a decent hp number of 19980 the attack number is absolutely irrelevant one cool thing about sill is the base crit damage is 63 typically we'll pull up valkyrie here and you can see the base crit damage is 50 so getting a little bit of a bump there on the base crit damage is actually kind of cool and the a1 is going to be attack one enemy with a 20 percent chance of placing a 30% decrease speed debuff for two turns also a 30% chance of decreasing the turn meter by 15% now we can book that up to a 50% chance of uh, decreasing the turn meter and also a 40% chance of of placing the decrease speed so pretty good in a1 we've got a lot of different utility going on there in terms of speed and turn meter this could notably be good in like the spider or the fire knight where you can place the speed and and it's really imperative on those two bosses to keep their speed down and lower their turn meter consistently also in the arena if you have kind of a defensive team you're constantly placing a bunch of decreased speed and decreasing turn meters on your a1 now for the a2 we've got an aoe that hits all enemies two times and each hit has a 20% chance of placing a stun for one turn, and she's based on defense. Now, we can actually get this booked up with a 15% more chance and get each hit to have a 35% chance of placing a stun. I did test it, and she does place the stun on both the first hit and the second hit. So, wow, pretty consistent stuns if you get this booked to a three-turn cooldown. Going to be really good for dungeon waves faction wars anytime you're in a scenario against regular enemies also in the arena stuns are extremely good then for the a3 we've got revives an ally with 50 percent hp and places a 50 percent ally protection buff on them for two turns we can book that to a four turn cooldown so uh kind of shaping up to have a little bit of a nice blend of a decent a1 to lower speed some aoe cc and then some ally protection utility as well and then the passive i really like this it's called boundless life and it heals all allies by 10% of their max HP at the start of each turn. Now, that's not at the start of their turn. It's going to be every time Syl takes a turn. So at the start of her turn, she will heal all of your allies different amounts based on their max HP. She will also place a 30% increased speed buff on a random ally for two turns. And I did test this just to make sure, but she can place the increased speed buff on herself. So the heals will be different depending on the ally and how much HP they have. It's not based on her HP and she can place the random increased speed on herself. So it's going to be any one of the allies on the field, including her to get this random speed buff. So now I want to pull up a loop of one of her turns so I can talk about a few things in terms of testing her. So this, this loop is going to be when she takes her turn and she does her A2, which is the three turn when booked AOE that has the uh, hits each enemy twice with a chance to place a stun. Now what you're going to see here is when she takes her turn, you can see all the green swirling around our allies and she's healing them, them different amounts. That's based on their HP. You can see she heals the Royal Guard for like 2600 something and the Dracomorph for like uh, 3300 something. So it's based on their HP. They're all going to get healed different amounts 
when Syl takes her turn. So getting her with a lot of speed and taking a lot of turns can actually make her heals pretty consistent in terms of any sort of a faction wars or dungeon scenario. And then you'll see here, if you look at the stun, uh, when she attacks, I've got this slowed down a little bit. Look at the enemy that's in the middle. Uh, you'll see the stun gets placed on them first, and then the second hit places a stun on the enemies on the right. So when she attacks here, boom, stun in the middle, and then the second hit places a stun on the enemies on the right. So she can place the stun on every single hit that she does with that multi-hit AoE. So pretty consistent stuns and very reliable CC and also sustain for her team, including the AoE ally protection that she places on everybody. With her being based on defense, Sill of Drakes actually has a pretty decent amount of general utility. So let's put that away and let's go ahead and dive into Syl. Let's get her pulled up here in the champion index. By the way, huge shout out to SC Warrior 22, friend of mine that is in my clan who got Syl early before the daily login reward. So I'm able to kind of dive in and use their account for a few hours and do some testing to prepare this video. So I did want to make sure and, and take a moment to thank SC Warrior. I appreciate you letting me use your account for this. So let's get Syl pulled up here in the champion index and We've, we've got some pretty good gear on her. I wanted to get her built to do some damage so we can kind of see what she's capable of in terms of a damage dealer based on defense. Got some good speed, some good damage, and obviously accuracy is paramount on her because we need to land the decreased turn meter, the decreased speed, and land those stuns. That's a lot of her value. So we definitely want to get her over 200 accuracy if we're going to be playing, you know, stage 20s of things like Faction Wars and Dungeons. Uh, if you're going to be up towards the higher tiers of the arena, you honestly might want to get over 300 accuracy to land those stuns against those opponents up in the higher tiers if they're stacking resistance on people. So uh, definitely get lots of accuracy. You can build her as a damage dealer with crit rate. That can be good. Uh, not 100% necessary if you want to use her uh, as more of a support. If you don't have, like, God to your gear, you can take advantage of the stuns and the heals and the debuffs. Uh, and not have to worry about crit rate. But if you do have really good gear, not a bad idea to get her up to 100% crit rate. Uh, this is pretty good here. We've got 4,500 defense with 42k HP. Anything over 4,000 defense is great. Ideally, we would get her up to like 5,000 something. And then anything around 35 to 45,000 HP and over 220 accuracy or so. And she should be pretty end game viable as long as her speed is pretty decent and working within the concept of the team that you have her in. You do want to make sure you kind of want her going early in the rotation if you're using her in a dungeon or faction wars context because the more turns she gets the more she can churn out all that healing and she can also keep those stuns super consistent stuns can't be interrupted anyway so you want her cycling through those turns decreasing turn meters decreasing speed placing stuns and then every time she you know takes a turn she heals her whole team places the ally protection so you do want her kind of with a with, with a pretty fair amount of speed to be going as often as possible to cycle through all of those things I will walk you through the gearing process on here. Uh, for the banner, you're typically going to want accuracy. Accuracy, as I said, is a huge part of her value. So we're looking for speed, defense, accuracy on the banner. Now for the amulet, if you've got her with a good crit rate, you want to go with a crit damage amulet. Typically, you can see the crit rate is 15 plus 85, which is 100% crit rate. So a crit damage amulet with good accuracy is a good choice on her. And then for the ring, we're looking for a good stat stick. Lots of defense and HP, so this one works very well. For the boots, remember speed is important on her. We want her cycling through those turns. So we get speed with crit rate, accuracy, defense, all good choices it should be pretty self-explanatory defense chest is obviously something we're gonna want and then you can see the defense gloves because we're able to get good enough crit rate on substats of our gear and uh, a lot of that coming from the shield here but on the top row you're gonna be looking for a crit rate accuracy defense HP all the typical you know suspects here but I'll show you here if you want to see and that is the gear now, as we pull up the skills tab here, I want to walk you through the booking process and kind of discuss how that all works. So to max out Sill of Drakes, you can see here it takes 11 books. So uh, not, not on the higher end of the spectrum, but definitely not on the low end. Uh, 11 is pretty much in that typical range of like 9 to 12 legendary books required. So uh, now I think the, the main goal of booking her is going to be to get this A2 to a three turn cooldown, to be able to place those stuns, the AOE CC effect as often as possible. Um, this is impactful. So the books on her are pretty good. They, they all kind of help. I think the A2 and the A3, I would say A2, this is the priority. 
Uh, if you get lucky and you want to stop after getting that cooldown, great. Uh, but the uh, the ally protection would be second, and then third would be the A1. But, I mean, you do get a 20% buff chance to two different things in terms of placing the decreased speed and also a chance of placing the turn meter reduction by 15%. So all of the books are decently impactful. And, uh, you know, 11 books, it's not cheap. It's not ridiculous. But it is, uh, you know, a little bit towards the high side. It's above 10. So you'll kind of have to weigh those options. But I do want to make sure you're prioritizing, making sure... Hopefully you get good luck and you want to book this cooldown, especially if you're going to be using her in like as like a dungeon carry or in a faction war scenario. Then as we dive into the masteries, um, there's a couple different routes you can go in terms of either defense or support or offense and support. Um, I this setup here is pretty good for general utility I, I like it because a lot of her utility is landing those stuns that is her i think it's like the biggest part of the value of her kit so getting fearsome presence to help those stuns go from 35 percent to 40 percent on each hit remember it defaults as 20 and then we have the two levels of books that take it uh plus 15 to 35 if we can get another five and make that 40 the fact that she hits all enemies twice we're getting the the effect of this five percent twice so Fearsome Presence can be a very good mastery on her, and thus, this is a pretty good route. The Lasting Gifts and the Master Hexer can be good. Uh, remember, Hexer does not work with stuns, so definitely take note of that when you're building your Sill. And I will leave this here for a couple seconds if you want to pause and kind of, you know, let the masteries stay on the screen while you copy them or something. But they will also be in the Sill infographic that I have down in the vid description. So let's put all this stuff away and I will show you Syl in action. All right. So if we go to the arena, I didn't want to mess up SC Warriors teams too much. So I'm going to try to keep stuff pretty consistent. I just switched out one champion, but I will put Syl in here against a pretty high champion power team and we'll see what we can do. So we've got Arbiter boosting, Duchess doing her thing, Warlord doing his thing. And then now we've got Sill, and the default ability will be the AoE. And look at that. We just stunned all four of the opponents. How impactful is that? That is absolutely ridiculous. So here we go. We'll let this play out, and it should be a pretty easy win. So it looks like this, this team right here is going to be kind of featuring Sill as the damage dealer that also brings some CC to the table. The other team has a pretty good amount of sustain. So we could have a decent fight in our hands. And there we, you see three more stuns <laughs> coming from Syl. So, so much CC coming out of her. The A1 hits decently hard. That wasn't too bad. But it was against an attack champion. There we go. Two more stuns. You can see how consistent those stuns are on Syl. Especially if you get that fearsome presence. Because of the multi-hit AoE, it's, it's going to be very consistent. There's the decreased speed. When you get sustained battles like this, that A1 can kind of start to get a lot of value. Wonder if Gorgo is going to get a fat revive here. All right, and there it is. But yeah, wow, you got to see that in kind of in action in the arena. So many, she placed like gotta be have been like 13 or 14 stuns it was very consistent stunning coming out and uh and the first two turns i believe it was all four and then it was three out of four so uh she was she can definitely be a stun cc carry in an arena context so let's pop into kind of a dragon team let's go into dragon 20 and we'll feature sill and kind of we'll see how she can do against the waves here kind of what everything looks like so she'll go after draco there's all the heals and the stuns Looks like we only got one there. That's pretty bad luck, I think, to only get one stun there. I think she'll probably average in a, in a dungeon, stunning like three and a half or so, probably, out of the uh, five enemies. Yep, okay, and there, she stunned, I, I think it was, was it two of them? Two out of four? Pretty solid, lots of CC. Now, against the against the dragon in a boss scenario, she's not going to be super good. Obviously, you can't stun a boss or anything, um, but she does have the inherent heals every turn. So she's healing the, the team somewhere between like three and 4,000 typically. Uh, a lot of your 
kind of stage 20 champions are going to have somewhere between 30 and 40,000 HP typically. You take that times five, you know, you're, you're healing like 20k or something every single turn. That's pretty solid in terms of AoE heal, just as a passive ability. So there she is in a, in a one minute dragon 20 team. Not not a super crazy amount of damage, but not bad. We're getting up there towards 400,000, kind of competing with Ray. Ray did 616. So you couple that with the heals and the CC, pretty solid in dungeons. So now let's go ahead and get her graded live in all sort of the different aspects of the game. They've got her in defense and HP. I would have liked to see like a defense and speed maybe, but not too bad. Um, campaign, I'll give her a five. Uh, I actually didn't show her there. I meant to show her as a campaign farmer, but um, I don't want to exit out of here and, and, and then have to wait a day to do it again. But uh, she can do the campaign in about... 16 to 22 seconds somewhere in there as a campaign farmer and she's based on defense uh, So she's gonna be very easy to gear and keep alive in a campaign farming scenario She's not god tier But she can also help you in terms of three-star progression because she's got so many of those stuns and CC and also heals and a revive So she's amazing for three-star in content and she can also be a campaign farmer But by the time you get her at day 180 You're probably not gonna be using sill in a campaign farming aspect But she is capable of doing it in about 20 seconds and she's great for three starring content so sorry i didn't show that but i wanted to touch on that really quickly um arena offense with that aoe stun yeah i'll give her a i'll give her a five in the arena i mean that's pretty solid when you couple it with uh the ability to revive ally protect and heal faction war she's absolutely incredible you're definitely going to want to use her in your barbarians team um oh oh wait this was out of order this was clan boss i thought it was going to go arena offense and then arena defense um clan boss she's not gonna be super good uh the heels and stuff i mean she's not worthless i'll give her a two but not gonna be uh performing amazing there arena defense sure we'll give her a five now the spider den um people are always curious on how much a champion can help you progress in the spider and the fire knight because those are the two toughest dungeons typically for people on their way to completing the game quote unquote to get arbiter so um she's pretty good in in, in a spider context especially being magic affinity and the uh the stage 20 of the spider being spirit so yeah i'll give her a four that three turn aoe stunning all those spiderlings constantly and the uh, healing cc and ally protect and based on defense yeah I'll give her a four. I don't know if she'll be like super meta in the spider, but she's pretty solid there. Uh, Dragon, she's going to be a five in, in the dungeons typically. Uh, Ice Skull Worm is actually one of her best dungeons because a lot of people can struggle with needing to be revived in the dragon. And she's based on defense and has both ally protection and a revive. So yeah, definitely very, very good in the golem. Uh, Fire Knight is going to be probably her worst in terms of the gear dungeons. She doesn't have a multi-hit A1, but she does place the decreased speed and bring some heals and stuff. So we'll give her, and she's really good for the waves, we'll give her a 3. She's just not going to be like super good in the uh, Fire Knight, but Minnow, she's fine. She's a 5 there. Uh, Magic Keep, she doesn't really strip buff or ignore shield or anything. So we don't have any sort of special mechanic utility. We'll give her a 3. Spirit, she does counter the affinity. She's magic, so she's strong in that capacity. But again, not a whole lot of utility. Similar story to the uh, magic key, but she does affinity counter it. Uh, I'll give her a four. Sure, why not? Void, she's fine. She can, we can give her a five there. Uh, the force keep, she's affinity countered, and she doesn't decrease defense or ignore defense or anything. So uh, I'll give her a two just for the CC aspect of it, but not going to be great in the force keep. So yeah, let's get those submitted. And then before I let you go, I want to have kind of a discussion about uh, about Syl here. So gosh, you know, uh, I think as a daily login reward at day 180, I think Plarium got this right for the most part. Um, Syl is pretty solid. She After kind of playing around with her for a few hours and, and logging in here again, huge shout out. And thank you to SC Warrior 22 I really appreciate you. Um, I think they got it right. She, she's good, but she's not like godly meta ridiculous. Uh, she's really good for account progression. You can slot her in as a defense champion. She's worth six starring. She's worth maxing out, especially if you need a little bit of help in progressing in some of those dungeon stages and you want a, a good CC -er for the for the arena. And, and she, yeah, I think she's pretty solid. She's, she's definitely godly for your Barbarians Faction Wars team. I will definitely max her out and, and, and slot her into the 
Barbarians Faction Wars team, maybe even put her in my arena team and kind of mess around there a little bit and test her a little bit further. But yeah, I think they got it right. I think she's worth maxing out, worth building, and she performs pretty well as, as a legendary champion at day 180. I think a lot of people are going to want to max her out and use her, and she can help you kind of lower your times, be a little bit more consistent in your win rates, and hopefully progress into higher content in terms of you know the arena and faction wars for sure she'll be amazing there for you so yeah uh all in all i think she's she's pretty solid and i hope you kind of gained uh, something out of this video in terms of seeing her as kind of a, a you know a look ahead and, and what you can expect at day 180 in terms of sill of the drake so yeah that's gonna do it and as always thank you for watching have a good rest of your day peace